All right, guys, the crazy year 2020 has one more fight card left, and Nick and I are breaking down the main card and giving predictions right now. What's up, Barn Hill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So, Nick, we got one more fight left in 2020, and yeah. what a tumultuous year it's been from lockdowns, canceled cards, mm -hmm. uh, the emergence of Fight Island, great fights at the Apex. Yeah. It's been quite the year for MMA, and I think in a lot of ways the UFC has led the charge, uh, not just in MMA, but in all sports coming back in a safe way. Yeah, all sports have kind of been uh, in a frenzy and, and uncertain as to when they're coming back, and then some of them tried to come back and failed, and uh, it's it's really nice to know that the UFC was able to you know, figure out what they could do, a game plan that worked and uh, move forward and give us as many fights as they possibly could. I think I heard they had a fight every weekend since like mid July. So Which that's, is, that's really incredible. Yeah. If you're a fight fan and, and a sports fan, you've been fiending. Uh, I think you probably became a fan of martial arts and the UFC in particular uh, after this whole yeah. lockdown. And I got to give them just even that much more credit than other sports because in other sports, like for example, basketball, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have people pulling out of, of basketball games due to not making weight. Right. There is no scale involved in basketball. There is no weight cutting. Uh, there is no, you know, there's injuries, but there's usually not like serious you know, torn meniscuses, things that require surgery, at least as often as there is yeah. in, in MMA. It's certainly more challenging to bring people to the event and get, get them there healthy than it is in a lot of other sports. And then on top of that, you tack on, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, fights that had to be canceled due to positive COVID results and how they've adapted and made other matchups. Yeah. I think, I think uh, as this year comes to a close, we all owe the UFC a round of applause for a job well done navigating yeah. this crazy storm. Yeah, they gave us a ton of entertainment. And like I was saying, I think a lot of people that were just looking for sports to enjoy live sports, you know, nobody wants to go back and watch old sports. We know the results and sports are really only good live. It's like yeah. some sort of some dishes when you cook them up like sushi's great live but you don't want to wrap it up take it home and, yeah. and enjoy it later same thing with exactly sports. recorded mma is kind of like leftover sushi right exactly you know <laughs> it's it's nice to go back and watch some of the classics every now and again but we always uh, appreciate the live stuff much better and uh yeah i think it's going to be kind of weird waiting a couple of weeks as far as i know i could be off on this but the ufc's got no more cards after this one in 2020 and then is there one before the January 16th or, or, or is there that big of a layoff? I, I'm going to have to, I have to look at the schedule again. I'm not a hundred percent sure, yeah. but uh, I know they're doing fight Island and, and I don't think that they're even quite uh, sorted out on how they're doing yeah. that. Dana has mentioned a Saturday fight uh, on fight Island, followed by a Wednesday night fight, right. followed by another Saturday night fight, which would be, I believe the 23rd, right. the McGregor Poirier card. Uh, he's all but confirmed that that's going to be, I believe actually he has now confirmed yeah. that that fight has taken place in Abu Dhabi. And he's actually trying to make that international fight week, which, you know, we normally happens in July, June, July. Yeah. And now they're doing it now and they're trying to do it in Abu Dhabi with fans. I think that's yet to be determined whether or not that's actually going to happen. Uh, but they're talking about pool parties. They're talking about the Nelk boys. They're talking mm -hmm. about all kinds of uh, interesting things. It'll be really amazing to see if they're actually able to do that and do it in a safe way. Yeah, and if not, then they can just wait till July. I have a feeling things will be a little bit easier for them to, to navigate through as the 2021 year moves forward. No question. And talking about the last uh, fight card of 2020, one that unfortunately, like many others, was plagued by mm -hmm. COVID. We lost our main event. Hamzat Chamaya and right. Leon Edwards. Leon tested positive for COVID. Uh, Wonderboy Thompson stepping in there, and he's going to take on Jeff Neal. Uh, also a great main event, and yeah. this card is really good. It's it's a bummer that Hamzat's not on it, uh, and I was really looking forward to seeing that fight and seeing him carry. You know, if he got the win, carry some serious steam into 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to have to wait at least for the time being. But that said, there's some really good fights on this card. Very good fights, and uh, I think there's about 15 fights on there. Uh, 14 now because of the the pullout from uh, Leon Edwards, but. Yeah, I mean, Wonder Boy is always a main event attraction. You know, yeah. he's he's great. He's great TV. You gotta love watching a prolific striker like him. And uh, Jeff Neal is uh, just a monster. Yeah. He's a technical monster as well. He doesn't get quite the shine as Wonder Boy. I think some of the accolades and things, the accomplishments that Wonder Boy has br brought into MMA, 
gives him this kind of step above a lot of people. But make no mistake, Jeff Neal is a very technical striker and all around just a top contender. Absolutely. And I, I'm, I can't wait to break that fight down and yeah. get your prediction because as you guys i don't know if you know this or not but we don't discuss what our predictions are before yeah. we cut this video so most of the time we pick around the same fighters but sometimes we surprise each other yeah so, so i, I so have all, kicking off the all of card. the uh the odds here and we're just going to pick the main card fights um starting things off we've got none other than the wheaties box man himself mm. anthony showtime pettis taking on alex morano uh, morano obviously a, a, a texas fighter Pettis is a minus 330 favorite to a plus 270, so a pretty sizable favorite. Uh, Murano is actually out of Gracie Baja, the Woodlands. Okay, And cool. uh, Florida Local MMA, guy. part of, um, you know, part of Gracie Baja, Texas, where we train. Uh, he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, 4-1 and one in his last five, uh, beat Rise McKee by decision in November. And Pettis is 2-2 two and two in his last four, but those two, again, uh, were against Thompson and Cowboy, and uh, he KO'd Wonder Boy in 2019. So right. obviously, much stronger strength of schedule for Pettis. Pettis has wins over Oliveira, Charles Oliveira, who just had an amazing win this past weekend, Jim Miller, Gilbert Melendez, and Benson Henderson. So when you talk about Showtime Pettis, he was kind of one of those guys in the early days that started to break through and become a mm -hmm. superstar um, in MMA before there was really any big name people in MMA. Right. Uh, and I still think he's a relatively young guy. He's in his mid thirties. And I think he's still got a lot of uh, good fights ahead of him. Absolutely. And, you know, I actually just listened to him on uh, speak with Ariel and he was talking about how, you know, he had, he went through some tough times, uh, both like personally and, and mentally and, and things like that. So to see him kind of come out of those dark times and he feels very confident in himself, he feels like mentally he's in a better place than he's been in a long time, uh, maybe ever in his MMA career. So uh, I'm happy to hear about that. I love Showtime Pettis, such a big fan of his. This is by far uh, uh, Moreno's biggest contest yep. to date. And this is by far the uh, smallest name or the least popular fighter that Pettis has gone up against in, in a while and maybe a decade you know he's been he's been at it for a, a long time um I love I love how Pettis is feeling going into this fight uh I think that he's gotten back on track and I hate to go against a Houston fighter but uh when I make my predictions I just have to be honest with how I'm feeling and I think uh we're gonna see some some showtime some really cool vintage showtime moves he's gonna come in there and be a scrapper and you know what Showtime has also kind of shown us as of late that he's he I won't go as far as to say he's bigger than a title fight, but he's right there at the verge. He right. hangs out in that same circle as Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor, Jorge Masvidal. If any of those guys get the call to fight Showtime Pettis, they take it and they know Absolutely. they're going to put on a great show. It's going to be fireworks from start to finish and win, lose or draw. He's kind of there for a performance. And that's what I love so much about him. It's rare to see a former champion. Uh, be such a good sport yeah. about just right bringing up new fighters or uh giving people and the fans the matches they want to see yeah that's a good way to put it and i'm a huge fan of showtime too i think he really moved the needle in the sport back in the days when not a whole lot of people were moving the needle and you know alex morano obviously he's a black belt mm -hmm. uh, under the gb texas gracie baja texas banner we're both wearing Gracie Baja Texas shirts oh, yeah. right now. So this is no slight to Alex Morano. He's a monster. I've never personally met him or, or no. trained with him. The Woodlands is a bit far from where we are. Um, but still uh, a beast of a fighter. That being said, when I think about Showtime Pettis and the people that he's been in there with uh, and, and the people that he's actually been able to submit, Gilbert Melendez, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but Showtime was a purple belt when he submitted Gilbert Melendez, mm -hmm. who's a black belt training with the Diaz brothers. Showtime Pettis has always been the guy that can just do creative things in the octagon. Case in point, the Showtime kick right. that he landed on Benson Henderson. Probably one of the craziest maneuvers we've ever seen effectively land in an MMA fight Without ever. Doubt, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's up there with the Joaquin Buckley knockout yeah. that he just that happened earlier in the year. So uh, no slight to Murano. It's hard to pick against the Gracie Baja Texas guy. That being said, uh, I'm just going to have to go with my gut here. I want to be right in my prediction and say that Showtime Pettis wins by stoppage in the second round okay. due to strikes nice uh i think if if this was a five round fight it would probably he he would get a finish but um i think i'm gonna go with a, a third round you know a decision 
Yeah. And I think it's going to be unanimous, but uh, Moreno. the Morano, yeah. Morano. Is, Moreno is, everybody's saying Moreno instead of Morano because of that amazing fight we had last weekend. Right. With Brandon Moreno. Yeah, yeah. Close, close last names. I yeah. think he's going to gain a lot of experience fighting a, a legend like Showtime. Uh, I just think Showtime will get the edge uh, through a decision. Nice, nice. So and and the odds makers would would agree with us and, on and, that. And one. also, guys, we we make these predictions, and we have become so like uh, invested in getting them right. So that's the thing is like we don't try we try to keep our bias out of it completely. Yeah. If there's a local fighter, but we think that they might uh, be in there for a tough night out. We we just try to keep it honest. That's yep. it. Yep. If Nick fights again, and I think somebody's gonna beat him up, I'm gonna pick against him. Yeah. Exactly. But but no, I mean, honest, for us to sit here both being in Gracie Baja, Texas shirts and then pick, yeah. pick against a Gracie Baja, Texas guy, we want to give you guys the real true predictions, and yeah. we will always do that. And we hate being wrong. Yep. So here ne next we have Jillian Roberts versus Talia Santos. Mm -hmm. uh, this is much closer odds. This is a pick em, minus 110, minus 110. Yeah. Robertson has nine wins, six by submission, and she actually submitted Courtney Casey. Mm. That was in June. Uh, she fights out of the American top team, black belt and BJJ, four and one in the last five. Santos, her only loss in, uh, I believe, 16 fights, was a split decision in 2019, has multiple head kick finishes uh, and punch, in, punch and elbow sort of ground and pound finishes, which for the lighter women's divisions is kind of a, an interesting thing. So I'm curious to see if the six submissions of, uh, let me get these names perfectly right here, Robertson uh, is enough to neutralize what seems to be kind of a very heavy strike pressure attack from Santos. Uh, well, to me, I don't know a ton about these ladies. And so I'm going to go with the one that uh, is does a little bit better as far as the resume goes. Uh, I do think the, the uh, ground game is going to come into effect. You're going to see some submission attempts, but the ground and pound of Santos is going to uh, overwhelm uh, Robertson. And we're going to see a win via TKO stoppage round two. Yep. And so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go with TKO stoppage round one. OK, Um. I think uh, exactly what you said. You're going to see Robertson go for, for some of the submissions mm -hmm. because that seems to be the way. If she's going to end the night early uh, and not take it to the judges, it's by submission. Right. So she might be attempting some submissions, and I believe that Santos will be able to effectively navigate those submission attempts, advance position, and finish with ground and pound. Right. So gonna, to that's going to be a very good fight, actually. And like you said, I, I went back and watched some of their fights. I wasn't super familiar with either of them leading into this, but this is going to that's going to be a very good fight, I think. Awesome. And I think I, I know I picked it to be the first round, but it very well could be second or third. Yeah. Uh, I do think she gets I do think Santos gets it done, but it's going to be a good fight. Absolutely. All righty. So up next, we got the NFL convert, Greg Hardy. He's a minus 105 to Marcin Tibura, minus mm -hmm. 125. So Hardy actually slight underdog here. Uh, Tibura is on a three fight win streak, albeit all decisions and most recently uh, beat Ben Rothwell by decision. Hardy's on a two-fight win streak uh, since his loss to Alexander Volkov, right. and he most recently KO'd Maurice Green. So how do you see this going? They seem to be uh, increasing the level of competition that they're giving to putting in front of Greg Hardy right now, seeing right. if he can handle uh, climbing the ranks. And they're doing it, I wouldn't say slowly, but not super fast either. But Tibora is actually a very good fighter. Uh, and I think that um, this would be a big feather in Hardy's cap if he can get this win here. Absolutely. And when they gave uh, Greg Hardy Volkov, I thought that was way too much, way too early. Volkov yeah. very well could be a UFC heavyweight champion uh, before his career is done. I, yeah. I think he's got the skills to do it. Yeah. He's shown that he's getting very, very good. And uh, I, I'd like to see more out of him. But going back to Greg Hardy, he brings a certain athleticism, a certain intensity, uh, and a certain power to to the cage and you know whether you like him or don't like him a personal beef whatever he's getting in the gym he's training really hard all the time you yeah. can tell by the jumps and skill that he's making in each fight which is very impressive because he's staying pretty active as well mm. so uh, i see greg hardy getting a win a big win maybe one of the biggest of his career uh this weekend against marcin and uh, I think it's going to be uh, – he's going to feel him out for the first round. I think he gets a, a, a TKO finish after a great uh, – he, he stuns him with a shot, finishes it on the ground. The ref steps in and says yeah. enough's enough, second round TKO. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of see Hardy winning this as well. Um, you know, as you said, he is in the gym. He is training hard. This is a guy that, you know, lost everything. He had right. millions. Uh, right. You know, he, he was an NFL player. His level of athleticism was and still is through the roof. He made a horribly wrong decision in his life that completely changed the trajectory of his life. That being said, um, and, I, and obviously it was horrible what happened and mm -hmm. what he did, Fast forward to now, he is in the gym. He is putting the work in. Everybody who trains with him says, listen, this guy is, uh, he's a reformed man. He's changed his life. He wants to do better. He's, he's not only saying it, giving you the lip service, but he's proving it by putting in the work, by showing up, by trying to right his wrongs. And I think Greg Hardy is a man who finds himself uh, trying to trying to reinvent himself now at this in his 30s and and become somebody that the general public doesn't think that he is and I think that he's got he goes into practice every day with that sort of goal in mind and a bit of a chip on his shoulder and I believe that he's going to get it done by TKO stoppage as well I'm going to go round one okay. I think Hardy's going to come out explosive looking to make a statement. Um, you know, the heavyweight division, there's a lot of moving parts right now. And right. if somebody comes out and does something prolific, uh, it puts them right in the mix and the discussion for the people at the top of the heap. And that's what Hardy's looking for. So I think he's put the time in. I think he gets the uh, the win. The yeah, TKO win. I, I think he's been rising at the right pace. The UFC is doing, yeah. doing him well with the level of competition he's getting. I think this is going to be a big, a big step up for him. Marcin is a monster. He's yeah. very good. Uh, and Greg Hardy, you know, he's nobody's nobody's perfect. Uh, I think some people uh, he's always going to have this cloud over him. Yeah. Right. Everybody has some clouds. His is a little bit darker and a little bit bigger. And uh, he's just, you know, trying to figure out uh, a second chance at life. And, you know, as long as he keeps his head down, works hard and tries to improve and make progress as a human being every day, uh, you can't help but uh, respect that. Well, you don't have to like him, but you ha you can respect that. And uh, I think he's clearly getting a lot better, and that's why I'm picking him to win this fight. Yeah, yeah. I think athleticism is going to play a big, big key here. Absolutely. So now we got a very interesting one. We have the magic man, Marlon mm. Moise. Mm. Uh, you know, this, this guy was, at one point in time, not so long ago, seemed like absolutely unstoppable at right. 135. Uh, he's going to be taking on Rob Font. Now, he is a slight favorite at minus 135 to plus 105. He's only won one of his last three, Morais, that is, and that was a very controversial decision win over uh, Jose Aldo. Yep. Uh, he was KO'd by Sanhagen and Cejudo. The loss to San Sanhagen was only back in October, so mm -hmm. he's coming off of a knockout um, just two months ago. Font, Font has not fought in over a year, last beating Ricky Simone by decision, and has defeated Sergio Pettis and KO'd Thomas Almeida. Yeah. So how do you see this fight going? Great fight. Uh I think Rob Font, what they're doing up there in Massachusetts, him and Calvin Cater, they're they're working well together. They seem to have some magic, and they may be one of these new teams in MMA that's emerging as a, a real uh, stable of of high level fighters. I mean, the, what they're doing is pretty impressive. Uh, that being said, I do think that Marlon Weiss is a top guy, can carry the belt at 135 at any point. He did kind of hit a skid. It was weird because he got done wrong after winning the Jose Aldo fight. And, and there's a hundred situations where you can see a fight where the judges got it wrong. And I don't really see that he got, uh, that, that, uh, they got that fight all that wrong. I don't think they robbed Jose, uh, Jose Aldo. That was of very that. close. Marlon yeah. Weiss deserved that. It was a great fight. And I think that kind of messed with him mentally, but make no mistake. He's still one of the best 135ers on the planet. I think he cuts a little bit too much weight. I would like to see him eventually make it to 145, but while he's still there, there's still some great fights for him at 135. And I do think that we're going to see him get back into his winning ways on this one. I think it's going to be a great fight. You're going to see a, an explosive Marlon Moraes in the first round like you always do. If Rob Font gets through that, you're going to see a hell of a second round. And then I think uh, as long as there's still gas in the tank for Marlon Moraes, you know, he carries all that muscle I think he gets the job done. I think it's going to actually be a TKO stoppage in round three for T Marlon Marais. For Marlon Marais. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm I'm not one of the ones that uh, was saying that was a horrible decision when yeah. uh, 
when Jose Aldo did not get the nod against Marlon. Um, I think in, in a lot of ways, nobody was expecting Jose to get that decision win. Nobody really knew mm-hmm. how Jose was going to look at 135. There was the memories of him having trouble making weight at 145. Right. So it was like, you know, is, is this really he feasible? Made the, he made I think, the whole lifestyle change, and you, he really did yeah. look good at 135. He did, and I think it was more of a surprise to everybody than it was a ro- of how mm-hmm. well he did than it was a robbery. Right. Um, that being said, uh, you know, he, he, he's Marais is just coming off a knockout in October. Um, so that plays into into a, a factor. But then again, Font hasn't fought in over a year. So you got ring rust on one side. You have a recent knockout and the level of competition on the other the same either. No, not at all. Um, but I do believe in, in this camp, this, this Massachusetts camp. I think that. Marlon Morais, if you can question, if if you can say these are the the, the flaws in his game, it's one he he gasses way too early. Mm-hmm. Um, if if he doesn't knock you out in the early parts of the fight, he tend the first couple of rounds he tends to fade towards the end of the fight. Um, seems to sometimes his coaches need to give him a little more motivation than should be required mm-hmm. uh, when you're in a cage fight, especially right. one for a title or, or for title contention. Um, I like Rob Font. Uh, Ricky Simone is no scrub. That was his last fight. He won that fight. Um, and I'm just, I, my, my gut's telling me that Rob Font is going to lose the first round, but he's going to be able to weather the storm because he's incredibly durable. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to win the last, the, the, the rounds two and round three and win the fight 29, 28. Wow. That's a good yeah. prediction. I think it'll be a great fight. And you know what? Usually if somebody wins a fight, they don't call somebody out. Uh, but if, in a controversial win, you can kind of make a make a claim for that. I wouldn't mind seeing Marlon Moraes win this fight, Jose Aldo later in the night win his fight, and then then pair those two up again for a rematch. I think MMA fans around would love to see Jose Aldo and Marlon Moraes too after the controversial decision. Some people are adamant that Jose Aldo got robbed. Some people are like, you know what, it was pretty pretty fair fight, so the best thing we can do is just throw him in there again and see what happens. Yeah. And, and speaking of that, is that, is that the next? Oh, no, no. We got one more. Sorry, one more yeah. before that fight. We got Michael Pijeda versus mm. uh, Chaos Williams. This one has fight of the night written yeah, yeah. all over S- it. Say no more. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very close as far as the odds go. Michael is a minus 146 favorite. Chaos, the slight underdog at plus 124. Um, Pijeda most recently subbed Zelim Imadev yeah. in September. That was a great uh, submission victory. Uh, he does sometimes get caught up a little bit in the flashiness, the entertainment. Uh, as we saw against Tristan Conley, he ended up losing the decision, not because he wasn't the better fighter, but because, you know, all the flash didn't really do enough damage to get him the win. Uh, Chaos Williams on an eight-fight win streak, a bunch of first-round KOs, has two KOs since coming to the UFC, and has spent Nick less than one minute in the octagon, uh, defeating Alex Moreno and Abdul Al Hassan in less than 30 seconds each. Yeah. So he's got 57 seconds total octagon time. Uh, and obviously we know Michael loves the flash and he loves to come forward. So I don't see this one going to the judges scorecards. No, I don't either. And that's the thing is usually when you see fight of the night, I, that, I, I'm predicting this one's going to be fight of the night and it's not going to go to the judges. It's not, it's going to be a great back and forth war, but it's not going to go all 15 minutes. Chaos Williams, like I said about Greg Hardy brings a certain, uh, ferociousness, a certain athleticism, a certain, um, just, just intensity into yeah. the octagon. I think after that brutal, uh, finish he had in his last fight not that long ago he's going to be looking to continue this streak maybe try to get um uh the the showman uh mike uh, michelle pajeda or whatever his name is uh out of there pretty early uh, i think you're it's going to be a very fun fight i'm leaning towards chaos williams getting a finish in the first round but it's going to be fireworks uh for as long as it lasts i just don't know how long that's going to be yeah I think I think uh, Pijeda is going to come out and do so. And is it is it Michelle or Michelle? My, Michelle? Is what I've yeah, heard. yeah. That's that's what I was thinking as well. My yeah. apo- it's, when it's, when I see Michael, Michael on paper, I just say my, Michael naturally. Yeah. So my apologies to Pajeda, but yeah, I, I think he's going to come out and he's going to put a lot of pressure on in the beginning. Uh, but he's going to do a little bit of his moving and his dancing and his back flips, mm-hmm. and that's going to carry it through to the second round. Um, I think Chaos Williams is able to find a um, find a shot that ends the night in the second round. I'm going to yeah. go with the slight underdog in Williams. Uh, Michelle is very fun to watch. 
Uh, but I think Williams has got some real skill. Yeah. And I think that he's a real uh, serious fighter that everybody's going to be talking about coming into 2021 as a as a contender. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm big on this guy, Chaos. Late first round TKO finish for me. Chaos Williams yeah. as well? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and uh, that that's a super fun fight. Most definitely. So that brings us to our co-main event. We have Jose Aldo, the future Hall of Famer, legend of the sport. He's taking on a, an up-and-comer in Marlon Chito Vera, very durable warrior, uh, showed his abilities against Sean O'Malley. Not a lot of people picked him to win that fight right. against Sean O'Malley, and he was able to get it done. Aldo has lost three in a row, but obviously one of those was to Marais, which was very controversial. Other two were uh, to Volkanovski, who's the mm -hmm. 145 champion, and Peter Jan, who's the 135 champion. So right. tough, tough company. Vera is 6-1 and one in his last seven. Most recently knocked out Sean O'Malley, as I said, finished him. Uh, this is the biggest step up in Cheeto Vera's career. Is he ready for somebody of the caliber of Jose Aldo? I think now's the opportunity for him to uh, figure out how, just how he fares against the highest level fighters on the planet. Jose yeah. Aldo has all the skills of the highest level fighters on the planet. I know he's lost, but he's only lost to the best. And uh, I think that uh, the UFC sees Cheeto Vera as somebody they could actually market. After the Sean O'Malley thing, a lot of people went from being fans of Sean O'Malley to being fans of Cheeto Vera. Yeah. They didn't really know that much about him, but they were pretty sure that their guy O'Malley was going to take him out. Then they realized, oh, this guy's pretty entertaining. He's got the cool look that people are interested in in this sport. And uh, let's see, let's see what he can do. So he really did take that momentum, some momentum from O'Malley. Obviously, O'Malley's still his own thing. He's a draw still. But Cheeto Vera definitely took as much momentum from him as possible and is running with it. And uh, I, I mean, he's fighting one of the legends of the sport and one of the top contenders at his division, even though he's lost a few fights. Uh, I think that you're going to see a great, a great matchup. I, I was leaning towards Jose Aldo at first, but the longer I think about it, I think Cheeto Vera is a very composed fighter. I think he's going to stick to his game plan, try to stay rangy, try to stay long, and uh, uh, get a decision victory over Jose Aldo. Yeah. You know, and Probably if, two rounds to one. If the Pejeda fight uh, versus Chaos Williams fight is not fight of the night, if it doesn't live up to expectation, this is my... Uh, choice B for fight of the night because yeah. both of these guys are incredibly skilled and both of these guys come to fight. Uh, I am in a hundred percent agreement with you on this one. I think Cheeto Vera has come a long way. Uh, and, and we kind of were introduced to him or reintroduced to him, I should say, uh, after that amazing victory of Sean O'Malley. And it's always funny how these things tend to work out, right? You, you, you do the trade of Demetrius Johnson for Ben Askren, and you think that Ben Askren is going to be this big star, much like Sean O'Malley. He's going to come over to the UFC, maybe even become the champion. Same haircut. What, exactly. What happens Jorge Masvidal becomes a, a star out of the situation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of those things like, yeah, we thought Sean was the guy, and Sean may very well still be the guy at right. some point, but if it weren't for Sean losing, we wouldn't have had the emergence of Cheeto, right. and I think he's going to go on a little bit of a run here. I believe in Cheeto's abilities. Uh, he's a very hungry guy. He talks about having that immigrant mentality. He's tough. He's gritty. He grinds for what he wants in life, and I can respect that. Uh, he's going to grind out a decision victory here, yeah. two rounds to one, just like you said. Cool. And then we got dun 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 the main event Hamza. Jo no, I'm just kidding. No, I wish. <laughs> oh, the co-main yeah, moved yeah. into the main spot, which is still a great, great yeah. fight. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Jeff Hands of Steel. Neil mm -hmm. Thompson at minus one fifty-five. Neil at plus one twenty-five. So again, very, very close. The odds makers giving Neil, um, you know, some points, even though he doesn't have nearly the accolades of Thompson. Right. Thompson has been out over a year. Uh, he did look excellent against Vince Vicente Luque in 2019 when they fought. Flawless. But that was in November of 19, so just over a year ago. Uh, before, he had two losses to mm -hmm. Showtime Pettis and to Darren Till. Neil is another one of these guys, man. Dana White Contender Series alumni on a seven-fight win streak with six finishes. Most recently knocked out Nico Price and Mike Perry. Yeah. Good uh, fight. Jeff Neal is, is a stud. He's yeah. such a great fighter. I've gone back, watched his fights, saw him live, and then, you know, they were so good that I've watched some of them over and over again. Um, Wonder Boy, nicest guy in the sport. And and Jeff Neal's not a far uh, far cry from Wonder Boy. Yeah. I think this is the an unofficial first defense of the NMF 
title fight. Yeah. So I, you know, <laughs> they definitely fit into that category. Uh, Jeff Neal seems like such a good guy. Obviously, we know Wonder Boy's uh, personality is authentic when it comes out. It's just raw. You can tell he's just the nicest dude yeah. ever. Um, I hate picking against Wonder Boy Thompson because I, I've always wanted to see him get the UFC strap. I think his style is very marketable. I wish he was a little bit younger and the UFC could really catapult him. I think he could do a lot of great things for the sport and bring a lot of new eyes. Be uh, be the complete package superhero that he is mm -hmm. for the young fighters, the young fans watching. You know, you, you're not going to get any nonsense out of him. You're not going to get any of the bad guys, the antics out of him. You would just get such a great role model out of him. And I wish he would be the champ. Um, I'm not saying it's too late for him. I think he could make another run. But, uh, but, and it, see, I'm literally going back and forth in my mind right now. Um, but, but something's just telling me that I should go with Jeff Neal on this one. So, yeah. uh, I think Jeff Neal may get, gain a lot of experience in this one. I, it, I'm guessing it's a five round fight. Yeah. Main event. You know what? Now that, it, now that I know it's a five round fight, I've not seen Jeff Neal in a five round atmosphere. We know Wonder Boy can handle it. I think Wonder Boy is going to stick to his game plan. I was literally on my way to picking Jeff Neal. I think I'm going to have to go five rounds decision, three rounds to two for Wonder Boy Thompson. Detour. Yeah, I, I took Thompson. a detour on that one. Well, every you know everything you said about Wonder Boy Thompson being a great role model can also be said about Jeff Neal. And one of one of my uh, you, you know the earliest memories from us starting this channel when we had like five or ten subscribers. Jeff Neal had a I can't even remember who he fought now, but it was like one of his first fights in the UFC. He had a great victory, and we cut a video on mm -hmm. it that got about seven views. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know even still, I posted about it and tagged him on Instagram and said that you know we did a video on you, you did, had a great performance. He took the time to write me back and say thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll check it out. Don't know if he really went through with it. It doesn't really matter whether he went through with it or not. Just the fact that he did that. Uh, he trains out of Dallas. I know some people. We know some people from Dallas that train with him. Uh, Ugly man Joseph Holmes. Shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, said that he's a beast. Obviously, we know that. Said he's just as nice of a guy as he is a good fighter. He has an absolute laser beam mm -hmm. of a right hand, and it can find its target from anywhere. Mm -hmm. I think Jeff Neal is one of the fighters to keep your eyes on uh, in 2021. I think that there's a, the future is extraordinarily bright for him. I've got Jeff Neal by third round stoppage. Nice. That, that's a great prediction. And it's hard for me to pick against him. I love, yeah. not only is he a great guy, you know, su and I find him to be super entertaining, definitely somebody to keep your eye on. And he's very well on the rise. I just, I, my mind is literally one of those yeah. things where I'm just like back and forth, back and forth. Either way, the fans really win this one because this, this is main event caliber, even though it was co-main. They moved the right two guys into this main event slot. I'm happy for both of them, and I cannot wait for this card. Absolutely. This is a good one. So just recapping, guys, we, uh, to start it off, we have Showtime Pettis, Alex Morano. Yeah. We both pick Pettis. We have Jillian Robertson versus Talia Santos. I picked Santos. Did you pick Santos also? Yeah. So both picked Santos. Uh, Tibora versus Greg Hardy. Both picked Hardy. Uh, Morais versus Rob Font. I believe this is the first one that we differed on. Yeah. Uh, I went with Rob Font. I think he's got a lot of upside. Mm -hmm. um, I think good things are coming for him. You went with Morais. Uh, we have Michelle Pijeda versus Chaos Williams, the match that's guaranteed to be Chaos. Yes. We both picked Chaos. Uh, Jose Aldo, Marlon Vera. I've got Cheeto. Did you pick Cheeto as well? Uh, yeah. Cheeto Vera. And then we have Steven Thompson versus Jeff Neal. We differed again on the main event. Nick went with Steven Thompson in a tough decision. Yep. I went with Jeff Neal by third round stoppage. Nice. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your 2020. Happy holidays. We're still going to be putting out some content, even though there's yep. no fights coming up. Uh, and we hope you enjoy these last fights of the year. Let us know in the comments, who are you picking to win these fights? And who would you like to see the potential winners fight next? As always, we really appreciate a like, comment, and subscribe. And a subscribe also on audio where you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much, guys, and have a happy holiday. Enjoy the fights. Peace. See you.